Hey guys, welcome to Tech Learnings. Today I'm starting with a kind of experiment with the content that uh, we learn. Mm, due to time constraints, I have not been able to post the videos, post the content for you guys frequently, right? There is inconsistency. So you people wait or uh, I'm unable to post content, let's say for a week, like for example, last video I uploaded, I think, more than a week ago so this inconsistency basically i want to remove and uh, i'm thinking that let's in each session in each video let's focus on a very simple concept a very small thing let's say if we learn each and every uh, day a new thing then uh, rather than putting up all those things in a single video and then uploading let's say in within five days or four days let's day by day let's day by day post some videos so that uh, we continue to remain in touch okay so this is an kind of experiment like i said so we'll be learning our sessions will be shorter and uh, each and every day definitely uh, we'll try to learn something new okay so hopefully we'll be able to make it this time so today's session is about response body annotation okay this session is about spring and uh, there is an annotation in spring which is at the rate response body okay so today's session is focused on that annotation what that annotation does i tell you even in my interviews one of the people i interviewed i asked this question what does at the rate response body do so i found I mean, uh, a lot many people did not have understanding of this and probably they did not use it in their project or probably they used it, but they were not aware that what does this annotation actually do. Okay, so let's try to create a simple spring uh, project, web MVC project. Let's create, let's say, say spring and uh, we want a simple spring web mvc project and let's name it to response body demo next okay let's say i say com dot tech learnings dot response or let's say demo okay so this is the base package we defined so here is our project ready let's try to just simply run it as run on server let's say tomcat right so this we had covered pretty much in our previous session so this is how simple in eclipse or sts whatever you use to create a simple spring web mvc application this is a working application and uh, where we have a method for us home with which is mapped to slash url like it is kind of home page for us and it is returning a string which is home and uh, it maps to home.jsp if we see the servlet context.xml our internal resource view resolver says views are in web rnf views directory if you are working with spring you are you'll probably be aware of this thing views and this is home.jsp and this is the content that is appearing cool so this is so far <coughs> basic right now now what this application is doing it is returning the name of view and the internal resource view resolver it is mapping it to home.jsp and displaying this content Cool. Now, what if I add this annotation a response body? All right. So let's see first what happens exactly when we add this annotation. We'll, we'll see how it works or what it does later. Let's see first. Is there any change in the output here that we are getting? Okay. We are returning here. A string object right and uh, previously it was the name of JSP now 
let's see refresh it so it is returning this now as a text home okay so is it the name of gsp or is it something is it this text which we are returning that is what we want to know all right first thing is at the rate response body we saw that this let's let's make it this way suppose this is sample text i keep it sample text so it is now returning a string and now as we are refreshing let's get the content reloaded uh, <clears throat> okay reloaded now see so it is now this text actually is being displayed all right so what add the rate response body does now let's get uh, back to the core meaning of add the rate response body so whatever object that you are returning it is binding that object directly to the http response cool now how is it different from the previous approach right where were, where were we where we were returning the name of gsp so in the you can say uh, simple spring web mvc application we are returning the name of view and the view resolver then takes finds out the corresponding gsp right and then that gsp is being displayed this is the you can say the <coughs> uh, flow basic flow now when add the rate response body annotation is added what it does it just uh, you can say writes this object directly directly to the http response okay there is nothing like uh, the you can say it it doesn't go to the view resolver and then find the gsp Th that flow is skipped the data is written the object is written directly to the http response okay that we saw in this as well now can i say here object okay so will this now work i'm returning a string that's fine object return type string can be returned as an object as well so context reloaded that's fine <clears throat> let's try to refresh and it still works cool now uh, like i said today's session now or our sessions will try to keep it short so let's do a small thing as well before we sign up for today so if we are returning object now can we return any object this is this is the next question which comes to mind right is it necessary or is it imperative that you need to return only a string what if i try to return an integer let's say new integer let's say 10 okay will this work okay content reloaded that's fine no it doesn't work it gives us an uh cdp response error which is 406 that the resource identified by this request is only capable of generating responses you can read about it right so this is one thing we we got to know that it is not that we can return any object okay string it was working fine let's try to create our custom object let's say i say my class okay and it has a fill let's say private int id let's generate the getter and setters quickly okay let's stop the server for uh, for the moment okay. so that we can make the changes we don't need this now basically what we want to see is can i return my class object no my class let's say my class dot set id let's say one and uh, let's see so can we do this now our own object right debug mode 
I, since I have this habit of running the servers in debug mode, so it's fine whether you run it for now in debug mode or not. Okay, so let's try to refresh it. It's still the same. 106, the resource identified is only capable of getting responses with characteristics. <clears throat> so it is it is not able to basically it is not able to display this response the web browser is not able to display what we are trying to send here right we are trying to send a java object here but string was also a java object it was perfectly working so how why the things are not working that we'll see in the next session okay so for today's session the thing is we saw at the response body annotation if I put it in front of any method, what difference does it make to that method? This is the core thing that we want you to see today. And uh, regarding this 406 or uh, the web browser not able to display the data 406 status and uh, this description you can read, we'll talk about it in the next session. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.